there's this tremendous degree of inbuilt biological structure and biological commonality and we talked about it most particularly in reference to the hypothalamus which seems to be the the, the built-in initial sub-personality generator something like that and the hypothalamus is responsible for regulating what you might regard as the most fundamental biological elements of behavior that things that the the systems that not only keep you alive, which is obviously very important, but also impel you to do such things as defend yourself, obviously part of survival, and also to reproduce and to explore. And the exploration element is quite interesting because you, you think of that as a very sophisticated form of behavior, and it is, but it's rooted in an unbelievably archaic neurophysiology. So the hypothalamus roughly sets you into motivated frames and then when those frames either fail or when they're all quiescent because they've been satiated it pops you into an exploratory state of mind and you wander around exploring foraging for information roughly speaking so that you can update all the sub-personalities that you use to um, to organize your perceptions and frame your emotions and so forth now the so the hypothalamus throws up these frames, it makes you hungry, it makes you thirsty, it, it makes you defensively aggressive, it helps regulate your temperature through behavior and all of those things. Now, the problem with that is that it's a set of impulsive unidimensional systems, each one operating in the moment and each one only concerned with the uh, satiation of its particular aim, we'll say. And the problem with that is that while you live for more than the moment, you live across many moments, you stretch yourself across time and we know, p human beings know that they stretch across time and so actually have to consider not only the organization of their behavior in the short term but also the organization of their behavior in the short term so that it also works across weeks and across months and across years and maybe even for longer spans of time than that and also, equally and similarly, it has to work across people and one of the things that's kind of interesting about that is there actually isn't much difference between establishing a value structure that works for you now and next week and next month and into the future and establishing a value structure that works for you and other people simultaneously because you could say that whoever you are in a year is sort of like another person and so insofar as you can organize yourself so that other people find what you're doing let's say acceptable and valuable you're also organizing yourself so that perhaps you're acting in the best interests of your future self and so then you, you might say well if the hypothalamus can, 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 can organize your, your, your being such that you can satiate, satisfy your most basic needs why do you need the rest of the brain? and the answer to that is well it looks like it's to solve the problem of more complex forms of being, so these, these fundamental biological subsystems have to interact with each other in a productive way, they can't just cycle unidimensionally from motivated state to motivated state, it's not a very effective solution and not only that, you have to learn to operate in a world with time and with other people and so that makes the, 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 the adaptation problem much, much more complex and it's for that reason, as far as I can tell, and no doubt for other reasons as well that there's, there's utility in the provision of extra subcortical and cortical resources